Today is Saturday the 14th of May. I parked this tractor here last Sunday, so it's been sitting here for about a week. Just taking a, a walk around to get a close view over the tractor. That's an oil drip from this loader cylinder right here. It's got some oil staining from some seepage around the block. This loader ram also is a little seepy. And that's the oil drip stain under it. Here is this side of the engine block. This would be the left side. Filler upper. Here's a closer look at the loader. Arms are pretty straight. Bracing. Up here, not so much. This right here is where you fill the hydraulic oil. Um, the issue is about the loader being not that in great condition. That's not supposed to move. That's supposed to be welded solid. I've got the hinge point here. This is supposed to be solid. On the bucket end, this over here, grease optional, apparently. This down here is the front mount. This down here is the front mount hydraulic pump. There's the shaft off the crankshaft. This is just this is just a handy storage space for that. Valve bank for loader. I did fit this with a pressure beyond kit in order to pass hydraulics to the rear of the tractor. I've got a pressure line coming down and then a return line going back. And that the reason I built this is I had a, a wood splitter and the wood splitter has had its own valve on it, so that's that's why. Okay, let's take a closer look at this backhoe. This backhoe, as maybe you can see, that big strap goes around the rear differential of the tractor. It cradles under the tractor, like so, and is bolted to the bottom of the rear differential there. And there's also a couple of bolts underneath the frame of the tractor, which goes into the bottom housing. And on the left side of the tractor, 
Yeah, I've got one bolt that's a little too long, so it's just sitting in there for now. That vertical block is welded to the backhoe frame, and that fetches up against there to stabilize things. Again, on this side, we have backhoe frame bolted to the bottom of the differential, and a loader frame is bolted to the top. Here we have a selector valve for the stabilizing rams. Here's the end of the cylinders for the swing control. Here's the valve bank for the loader control. We've got one broken, <clears throat> one broken valve handle, which I intend on fixing or at least somewhat repairing in the near future. Spare hose laying there just because. So swing cylinders, they've seen better days, obviously. I did fix them up a little bit several years ago. I filled in some pits with the welder and filed and ground them smooth. Here's the main loader frame. We have a minor hydraulic leak there, just oozing a little bit. Here's the dipper stick. Coming down to the bucket. I did quite a bit of work on this bucket the last time I ran it, which was five or six years ago. I pretty much replaced everything but that bar down there because it was all bent up. I noted that this cylinder here has some scarring and galling. It weeps a little bit when it's uh, fully retracted in the dump position. These stabilizer arms, <clears throat> these stabilizer arms are one welded piece that's joined by that U-shaped cradle by that U-shaped cradle right under there. Uh, these are pushed down by one-way rams, as you can see here and over there. What brings it back up is the three-point lift mechanism, and it's a bit of a coordinated effort to bring the three-point lift up while you're relaxing the pressure in the valve bank so that you're not fighting hydraulic forces with the, the tractor itself. Let's take a look at the hydraulic pump. There's the end of the hydraulic pump right there. Now the backhoe frame kind of makes this cavity around the back of the tractor. Right in here, that what I'm pointing at, that's the back of the tractor differential. This right here is part of the backhoe frame. If you look inside here, if you look at those two bolts there, that's what goes into the housing to fasten this to the back of the PTO. And there are two more in the bottom. Okay, fuel shut off, very important. If you don't shut the fuel off, it'll flood the carburetor. See the fuel moving around? It's flowing. Ignition. Two clicks for the run. Transmission in neutral. Clutch in. Push to start. <laughs>
Mexico, we gotta engage the PTO. Touch down. Engage the PTO. And slowly release clutch. Watching stuff to make sure unexpected stuff don't happen. Alright, clutch is out. This thing does have some wear, some slop. Of course, it, could, it might be air in the system too. 